Hello everybody and welcome to this live class number 108 where we are going to be talking about action servers in ROS2. So let's go for it. Alright, so hello everybody and welcome to this new live class, live class number 108 already. And as I have just said, today we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, action servers in ROS2. So we are going to create an example of an action server and we are going to interact a little bit with it, get information, send a goal, etc. Yes, so well, first of all, let me know if everything is fine, audio is fine, image is fine. I... Uh, Everything should be okay, but I always like to, to, to make sure of this so that I can keep going without worrying about any problems in the in the setup. So let me know, please, guys, here in the, in the comments if uh, you can see me properly, you can hear me properly as well. Audio and video are working well. Says Engineering Nations, all okay, everything okay? Okay, excellent, then uh, let's go for it. Let's just start. So today, today we have a special session uh, in this live class uh, 108 because we are going to be using the new ROS development studio yeah so what is the new ROS development studio let's let, let me show you so let me if, uh, as always let me first of all get a drink here of my magic uh, potion for live classes and uh, let's let me switch to my computer screen then here as you can see i am in the super app Yes, so let me let me share with you guys here. It should be in the in the description of the of this live class in the description. However, let me share with you anyways this link here in the in the chat as well. Yes, so here we are in the uh, super app. Then until now here we only had uh, the courses, so we are already upgraded our academy to 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 this version to the super app where we contain here, we have all the courses and uh, every live class I was showing you this uh, page with with uh, with the courses and showing you and talking uh, about the new courses that we were publishing and then that we are going to keep publishing. Later, I, I will tell you more about this. However, now here, if we come to the left menu, we have here at the top the Robot Ignite Academy with all the, uh, you can access to uh, live classes, you can see your accomplishments, you can uh, see the courses pages as I am right now. And here we have the ROS Development Studio. You have uh, some options here, publish projects, my projects. In my case here, I'm going to come to my projects. And here I have the project for live class number 108, as you can see here. So first of all, I want you to Come to the super app and log in. If you don't have an account, just create it. Uh, it's free and it's going to take you some seconds. So come to this link, to the link I have sent in the chat, appdeconstructsim.com and log in if you already have an account. If not, just create a, 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 a free account in just a few seconds and log in. So now what I'm going to do is to share this project with you. This is exactly the same process as we have been doing until now. So I'm just going to get here the link and share it here with you in the chat. Felipe Rivas is saying, wow, looks great. Yeah, I, I, also, I also think so. And now uh, when we enter, uh, I, I think you are going to love it even more. So, okay, then log into the super app and click on the project link here and this is going to place here in the my project section is going to give you this same project yes can you guys confirm that you have the project here in your projects section the project for life class number 108 let me know guys so far so good 
got it. Yeah, work it fine. Done. Excellent. Excellent. So, so as you can see, the process is the same, just the platform is different. So now we have everything. Uh, here, Felipe was saying that this is amazing. Yeah, one, one of the things I really love about this is that now we have everything integrated into one single platform. Yes. So here, you can we can come to the courses, check the courses, enter a course in case I want to learn some specific uh, topic or, or or idea or concept. Then I can switch to the project. I can create a project here right now. I can create a new project in order to in to to practice, let's say, what I have just learned in a course, for instance, whatever. Yeah. So everything is integrated into one single platform. Yes. So this is one thing I really love uh, about this. And uh, let me let me tell you that this is still going to be upgraded in the in the future. So we are not going to stop here. Yes. Um, this, as you can see, also is a beta version. So we are going to keep improving on this in order to, to make it still more awesome. So now let's do one thing. Once we have the project, let's click on the run button, run project online. Let's click here. And as you can see, the project is loaded almost instantaneously. Yes. So we don't have to wait for two minutes like we were doing uh, before. So automatically we have the project environment already opened. Yes. Here we are waiting some seconds until the Jupyter notebook loads, but we already have the environment here. Yeah. Here is where the whoops, this has failed. Let me refresh here. There we go. Yes. So here we have the project for life class number 108 rush to action service in Python. Yes. Then, as you can see, the interface is different from from the one we have been using until now, the old Rust development studio. However, the idea is the same. Yes. So don't panic. We have the shells here. We can open new web shells. As you can see, we have here the code editor, the IDE which we can open and place around here. For instance, we can still organize this as we want. We can maximize, minimize windows. Yes. So the idea is the is uh, still the same. Let me. There we go. Yes. By the way, let's open a new shell here. Let's place it somewhere around here for now. Yes. Here we have the gazebo window. We can still choose to select a simulation. Well, this is not available yet. However, here we have the Gazebo window. Here we have the graphical tools as well. In case we want to launch, I don't know, RVs, RQT, some uh, external application. The real robot lab. Yes. So here uh, we can see live what is happening in, in the real robot lab. Here we have the real robot lab connection. So all the tools in order to connect to the robot, to this robot, this turtle robot, uh, three robot that we have here in the real robot lab. And uh, yeah, so here we can go to the forum in order to get help. If you have any questions here, we can come back to the dashboard and by clicking here in the name, we can save the project. Yes. So everything is the same. Same idea, different organization uh, and uh, quite improved performance. Yes. So let me know, guys, uh, are uh, all of you are uh, are you here with the project open it in this new screen? Yes, I have. Yes, it's super fast now. Yes, engineering nations. It's uh, really nice, right? Yes, works great. I have a word issue scaling the Jupyter notebook, though. The mouse is really slow to drag it. Yeah, um, this is something we need to improve. Uh, these engineering nations, the some, sometimes, uh, in my case, not in this one, but sometimes if when we try to move like this, uh, it's not very user uh, friendly. Sometimes it gets blocked and it's not very fluent. So this is something we are working on it. Just uh, be a bit patient in this life class and, and keep trying because uh, at the end you are going to be able to move it. But this is, uh, yeah, this, this is something that we are uh, working on it definitely. Whom and what happened to the previous version uh, project? That's a very good question, Miguel Area. So you, 
you can still access to the to the old ROS DS. Yes, so it's not dead. You can still go to the old version of ROS DS and uh, you can open it and you can access to your project there. So, yeah, so it's not gone. It's not deleted, the old ROS DS. It will be in the future, but for now, we still have the two options, and once we delete the old ROS, ROS DS, I suppose that we uh, all your old ROS decks are going to be transferred to the new version. Is it still possible to work with Airbnb while working with ROS 2? Yes, it's possible. That's possible for every young. Uh, yeah, here I can see Ricardo is here with me. He says uh, that the previous ROS decks will be migrated to this platform on Friday. I also can see here Ruben. Hello, hello, guys. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's like the mouse slips off of the title bar if I drag it too fast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah this is something that we need to 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 improve. Yes, this drag and drop option of the different uh, windows. It's something that we are working on it. Engineering Nations, thank thank you for your feedback. By the way, in case you have any feedback, just let us know, and 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 we are going to try to improve to improve it. Yep. All right. So as you can see, well, uh, I have been talking, but in fact, we are set up in, in seconds, yes? So just uh, after a few seconds that uh, we open the project, we are already here set up and prepared to, to start working. So this is, this is uh, I, I really don't like this very much because I, I, I enjoyed the loading time of the project because I could talk uh, with you guys about uh, different things. I could show you the academy. So now I don't have time for this. Because I opened the project and it's automatically uh, open it, so I don't have time to talk to you guys. However, I'm going to 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 talk anyways with you. So let me do one thing. Let me come here to the dashboard real quick. And uh, as always, as you can see, we are in the super app still. We can come to the courses section. We can check the courses. And uh, let me tell you guys that uh, this week we are going to publish a new course, which is going to be about maths yes yeah, so basic mathematical concepts that you are going to use in robotics like for instance i don't know uh, matrix operations uh, time derivatives integrals um, i don't know this kind of basic mathematical stuff that it's quite often used uh, when working uh, in the robotics field so we are going to create we are going to provide a course which is going to be published this week in the following days about this yes so it's going to be focused on teaching basic mathematical concepts always oriented to robotics yes and also very soon we are going to be publishing a course on motion planning yes and discussing the different uh, algorithms that are most used for motion planning like a star jigstra rrt uh, virtual potential fields etc yes so stay tuned to the academy because uh, new courses and this is just the, the 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 ones which are closer but there are many more coming in the near future yes yeah? so stay tuned here with the new courses and now if i want to go back to my project i can just come here click on the play button i have here in the top bar and he, here it says, open it, Roget. Hey, you have a Roget, open it. Roger Berberes, life class number 108. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to our Roget. Okay, so here we are back to our Roget so that we can start working on it. Yes? All right, so far so good. Then let's start with the environment setup. As we have been doing, we are going to be working today with the Turtlebot 3 robot, ROS2 Eloquent. Yes? We can see here, ROS Distro, ROS Eloquent. Yeah, so we are still working on ROS2 and we are going to keep working with the Tartabot 3 robot. So let's source here Eloquent version. Let's source here our workspace. As always, we are sourcing this workspace because it's where we have the Tartabot 3 packages, which are the ones which are, uh, that are going to load my Gazebo simulation. So I need to source this workspace. Let me make this uh, here a bit bigger. Now I need to export all the gazebo related environment variables in order to properly set the paths to the models, etc. And finally, the model to use, which is going to be Waffle. And now I can 
copy and paste the launch file for the simulation. Yes, ROS to launch, Tatarbot 3 Gazebo, empty world. Then let me execute this command here. And once I have executed the command, I can click here in the Gazebo window. Whoop. And it's going to load here my simulation. Yes, I have been doing many tests before this live class and it should work at the first try. Yes, so you remember in previous live classes, we had some problems sometimes here loading the simulation. Um, sometimes this was not uh, connecting properly. GC Web was not showing the robot, so we had to stop the process, launch it again. So I have been doing many tests uh, today for this live class and every time it loaded at the first try. Yes, so this is another improvement. We have our Tatterbolt 3 robot working 100% of the times. Yes, can you confirm guys if your simulation has loaded also uh, properly? Like this, you have the gazebo, robot, the gazebo simulation here with the Tatterbolt 3 robot in the center. Can you confirm to me? This is pretty awesome. I'm really happy to see that the shell and editor load quickly and reliably now. Yes, that's amazing, Engineering Nations, yes. So the loading times are, are really, really uh, nice. Now, I love it. All my issues with uh, old Ross DS have been solved, says Felipe Rivas. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's it's really nice the performance of this new uh, ROS DS. Yes, load it properly. Yes, load it. Okay, great. So so we are set up. Uh, as you can see, uh, the setup has uh, been done in in just a few seconds. So I have been talking meanwhile, but uh, otherwise than that, because I li I like to talk a lot. Otherwise than that, we loaded the ROS jack, the started the simulation, everything in just a few seconds. Yeah, so this is amazing. This is amazing. Then as always, now we can minimize this shell because we are not going to use it anymore. This is where we have the simulation running, so don't close it. We can just minimize it. Yep. Let me, by the way, make this a bit bigger. Let's put it here. And now, for instance, if I click here in the shell button, sorry, let me move this because this is another improvement. Because here, as you can see, when we click, we have these um, buttons here, which are hover. Yes. However, if I move this here, I cannot see this. This is in the background. Yes. So we, this is a modification that we have to do. This needs to be bring uh, to the top, to the front, let's say, to the uh, front of the page so that we can see it anyways. Even if we have this, we can see it. Yes, then for now, just remember this, uh, have this bird this into mind, just move this a little bit to the side. You put your mouse here on the shell option and you are going to see two options. You can come to the old shell, which we have minimized it, or we can open a new one. Here in the plus button, we are going to open a new shell. There we go. Yep. Then we are going to start working on this new shell right now. And Let's start. Yes, so we are set up. Uh, we have the project running, simulation running, everything ready. I have explained it uh, to you guys about the new uh, Rush DS, which I'm glad that you have loved. Uh, so, so that's really nice that you love this new Rush DS. Then now let's not lose any more time and let's focus on the live class. So today we are going to be talking about uh, action servers in Rush 2. So what is an action server? First of all, let me get a, a quick drink here. So what is an action server? Well, actions are one of the communication types in ROS2, like uh, topics, services, which are intended for long running tasks. They consist of three parts, a goal, a result, and a feedback. Yes, we are going to, to go deeper and understand better this as we advance in the life class. Then actions are built on topics and services. Yes, so it's like a, 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 a cover, let's say, which uh, works on top. Uh, so inside actions, what really are happening uh, is that we have topics and services communications. Yes. 
their functionality is similar to services. Yeah, so you remember that some weeks ago, we, well, I think it was a couple of weeks ago that we did the live class on uh, ROS2 services. And I, I remember uh, one of you that uh, were here in the live class asked, hey, but what's the difference between services and actions? Okay, so the functionality is very similar. Yeah, so we are going to call also, we are going to call in some way, in actions it's called to send a goal, but we are going to, to, to send a goal to this action server, and the action server is going to do something and it's going to return a response to me. Yeah, so in, in, in uh, thinking like this, it's very similar to a service. However, however, there are a, a couple of things that actions provide that services don't. For instance, actions are preemptable. You can cancel them while executing. Yes, we are not going to see this in this live class, the preemption of actions. However, you need to know this, that actions are preemptible. Yes, so you can cancel an action while it's being executed. Another thing is that, is that they also provide feedback. So while the action server is doing something, it's doing its work, it can provide feedback to the client to know what's going on. Yes, this, for instance, the feedback, we are going to see today in the live class how to use this feedback as opposed to services which return a single response. Yes, then actions use a client server model. So we are going to have a client and a server. Yeah, this is uh, the same idea as in services where we had the service server and the service client. In actions, it's the same. We are going to have the action server and the action client. The action server is the one which provides the functionality, let's say, and the client it's the one who requests this functionality yes it sends a goal to the server in order to do something and then the server is going to do its task and it's going to return a response to this client while for instance providing feedback yeah um so then the action client node sends a goal to an action server note which acknowledges the goal and returns a stream of feedback and a result. Yes? Make sense? Okay, then let's start. So let's start by writing the server code. So we need to, to, to create this action server, first of all. Yes? If we don't have an action server, uh, we don't have nothing. Yes? We cannot have just an action client because the client needs to connect needs to send a goal to a server. So if we don't have an action server in the first place, we cannot work with actions. Then the first thing we need to do here is to create an action server. So let's write this action server code, first of all. Then, as always, let's come here to our new shell. Let's source the eloquent ROS version. As you can see also, the shell is super fast, right? Can, can you see the difference from, uh, from this web shell to the old ROS DS? In my opinion, at least uh, working on it, uh, preparing this live class, I, my 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 perception is that it's super fast. It's much faster than the old ROS DS shell, right? Then, um, okay, so let's source this. Let's come to our workspace SRC page, ROS2 workspace SRC, and here we are going to create a new package. Yes, so here we have it. We're going to create a package which is named my action server and it's, of, it's a Python package, yes? Then let's create here the package. And now we are going to see it here in our ROS2 workspace. You are going to see this new package here, which is named my action server, yes? You are going to see that in your ROS you have another package here in the source folder. You have this package named test action, yes? Don't worry, don't worry for now about this package. We will see it a little bit later, but don't worry for now. Yes, just focus on, focus on this one. We have created this new package, my action server. Yep. Then, what else? Let me make this a bit bigger here. All right. So next thing is to create the code. So we are going to create the Python script, which we are going to name action server. So remember, inside the my action server folder here, the one which contains the init.py, we are going to create our new file. So I'm going to name action server.py and now here we are going to copy this code and paste it here to our file yeah so this is the code 
for our action server. Then let's let's keep going, and now we are going to review this code. Let's keep going. So uh, next thing to do is to prepare it for the compilation. Remember, we need to create the executable. So I'm going to copy this line here. the one which is inside the console scripts variable here. So I'm going to copy this line and let me maximize this for a moment. I'm going to open here the setup.py function and inside the console scripts, I'm going to paste this line. Yes, so here what we are doing is to generate, to create an executable named like this, action server node from my action server folder, the action server script, which is this one, and from the script, the main function. Yes, yeah, so I am creating an executable, this one, which when I run it, when I execute it, is going to activate the main function. Yes, this main function from my script. Yep. Then let's come back here to our shell and let's go back one folder here to the root of our workspace. Why? Well, because I need to compile and compilation is done in the root of the workspace. So let me now here execute the command call com build. It's going to compile both packages, my action server and test action. There we go. And as always, remember to source, oops, source here the workspace after compilation. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we have created our code and we have compiled it. So now we have the uh, executable. So now we can run it with the next command, rush to run my action server, action server node. However, before, before doing this, let's have a quick look here at the code of our action server. So what is going on here? Let's see. So first of all here, we can see that we are doing some imports as always, yeah? So we are importing RCLPy, we are importing here the action server module. We're importing the node module. Yes. So the node, it's very typical in, in, in live classes that we have been working with Rust2. This is new one. Yes. Since we are working with, we are going to be creating an action server. We need to import this action server model. Yes. From RCL by action. Then from test action dot action import test. What are we doing here? Well, we are doing the same as here. Yes, this uh, line, this uh, from geometry messages message import twist, we have already seen it in previous live classes. So here what we are doing is to import the twist message, which is used, for instance, in a publisher to publish messages into the command bell topic in order to move the robot, right? So this is basically the same. This line is the same, but we are importing an action message. We're importing an action message, which is named test which is from the test action package. Yes, Th does this package ring a bell? Right, this package is this one here. So actually this package, what it has is an action message defined on it. Yes, this test.action, this is a, 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 an action message. Yes, then this message is being imported here into our code because we are going to be using it. Yes. And what does this message contain? Let's open this file one second only. Let me close this. So remember, remember that when we were talking here, when we define it better, uh, let's say when we define it action server, we say that actions consist of three parts, the goal, the result and the feedback. Yes. So the goal it's sent from the client to the server in order to activate the, the action process. The result is it's sent from the server to the client when the action finishes and the feedback it's published by the action server while the action is, taken, is taking place. Therefore, actions consist of three parts, a goal, a result and a feedback. Therefore, the action messages have three parts as well. They have the goal, which is the first section here, as you can see, we have three different parts of the message, which are separate by these dashes, three dashes here. 
This is similar as service messages. This is the same as how actions work, action messages work in ROS1. So if you have already experience in, with actions in ROS1, you already know this. Yeah, so we have three sections of the message separated by three dashes. The first section is the goal. The middle section is the result. And the final part of the message is the feedback. Yes? So in our case, our goal It's going to be a variable of the type integer in 32 named sex Se from seconds. Yes, uh, our result is going to be an a string named status and our feedback is going to be another string named feedback. Yes, so this is the structure of our message. Then basically in this test action, if you, you were wondering why we you already have it here, this is because I have prepared it for you, for this live class, I have prepared this package which contains a, a special action message that we are going to use in our action server. Yes? So, uh, having said this, nothing else. So this package, it's all for creating this action message. Then let's come back here. So here, what we are doing is to import this message that I have created here in the test action package. I'm importing this test message. Um, what else? Then here we have the class definition. Yeah, we are initiating the class which is named test action server, which uh, inherits from the node class. Yes. Then in the constructor of the class, the init function here, we are creating the action server, as you can see here, which uses here the test message that we are importing. It is named test here. In fact, let's do one thing. Let's do this all together because I don't like, I, we have too much tests here. Let's rename our action here to my action. Yes. So our action is going to be named my action. Let's rename it here. Then as always guys, so um, uh, even though the platform has changed uh, quite a lot, the idea of the life class has not changed yes so remember i want you to keep doing everything that i am doing doing it yourselves from your computers yes so i don't want you to be just listening to me or watching to what i'm seeing but i want you to be practicing with me yes so uh, all these things that i i am doing creating packages creating the files compiling here now i am modifying the code everything you can do it yes if you want to name your action uh, with a different name, you can do it. Yes, you can name it. Uh, I don't know. Um, Chuck Norris, for instance, you can name it Chuck Norris your action if you want. Yes, but I want you to uh, be proactive to 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 test everything, all these things that I am doing to do it yourselves, because this is the way that you are going to really learn. Then I'm going to name here my action as my action. Yes. So remember, we are creating the action server. We set the message that this action server is going to use. We give a name to the action, which is my action in this case, and we define as well a callback function. Yes, which it's named in this case execute callback and it's defined down here. Yes, here we have the this callback function definition. Yes, so here is where we are creating, we are uh, defining the action server. Yes, how our action server is going to be. We have not defined yet what is going to do because this is defined inside the callback function. But here we are saying, hey, my action server is going to be named like this and it's going to use this type of message. Yep. Then below, what we are doing is to just create a simple ROS publisher. We are creating a publisher. We already have seen this in previous live classes, so I'm not going to go over it. We are creating a publisher which is going to publish into the command bell topic in order to move the robot. Yes. Then here we have the execute callback function. So every time a client sends a goal to this action server, this execute callback function is going to be triggered. Yes. Then what is going to happen here? Well, first of all, we print some uh, data to know what's going on. So here we have a, a, a print saying executing goal. Okay. Then here we are defining a twist message and we are assigning to the linear x velocity a value of 0 0.5. Yes, so we are creating a Twitch message and giving it a value, a velocity. 
Then here we have a for function, a very simple for function, which says, hey, for e in range 1 and this variable here, yes, what is this variable? As you can see, our execute callback function has uh, two arguments here. One is self, which is the action itself, and the other one is goal handle. So whenever I send a goal, I send uh, from the client, I send a goal to the action server, I'm going to receive a message here, which is going to be stored, saved in this goal handle, handle variable. Yes? Then here, I can access the current value of the goal like this, goal handle dot request dot sex. Why sex here? Well, because sex, let me open back here the my message definition. Sex is the name of the variable which I have in the goal, sex. If this was different, then this variable here would be different. But this, as we have said before, this is the goal. Yes, this was the goal, the result, and the feedback. So when I send the goal to the action server, I'm going to send this variable. Then this variable is going to be captured here in the goal handle variable. And I can access it like this, goal handle dot request dot the name of the variable, which in this case it's sex. Yes, then this is going to contain an integer. Yes, so for instance, let's say that it contains an integer uh, it contains the number five, let's say, yes? Then here, what I would have is for e in range one, five. I will have, I will have a, a loop which is going to go from the number one until the number five, yes? Then let me get a drink because I'm talking too much and my throat is getting uh, uh, super dry like a desert. Then inside this loop, what I am doing? I am publishing a message into the common bell topic. Yes, so this message I have created previously and fill it. I am publishing. Therefore, I'm going to be moving the robot. Yes, because I'm publishing into the common bell topic. And here I have a time slip of one second. So I'm going to wait one second. So basically, each iteration of this for loop is going to last for one second. So if I go from one to five, for instance, this iteration is going to last five seconds. If I go from one to 10, it's going to last 10 seconds, etc. Yeah, so this is this time asleep. I'm going to, to wait here for one second. Yes, then once I go outside this loop, I'm going to set the goal, the, the goal to succeed. So I'm going to say, hey, Everything has went properly. I have finished uh, this and I'm going to set the variable to succeed. And also what I'm going to do finally is to set the linear velocity to zero and publish the message in order to stop the robot. Yes. Then finally, I am going to set here a result variable, which is going to be the result of our message. Yes. So this is our test message. And here we are accessing the result, which is basically this. Yes, this is the result, which has this status variable. Yes, so we are saving this message into the result variable, and then I'm accessing this status variable, which remember, it's a string, and I'm filling this string with the following. I'm saying, hey, finish it, action server, move it during x seconds, being x, the number we have set in the goal. Yes. And finally, I return this result, which is going to be received by the client. Yeah. So what's going to go on here, more or less? Yes. Having explained the code. Well, here we have the main function, which basically here I'm initiating RCLPy. I'm just creating an instance of the class, of this class here, and uh, I'm setting here an spin. Yeah, so that this uh, action server keeps there being uh, uh, keeps uh, running, keeps uh, life, so that uh, anyone can call it. Yeah. So what's going to to happen here? Yes, having reviewed reviewed this code, what's going to happen here? What we expect from this action server? Well, I'm going to call this action server and I'm going to send in the goal an integer number. Let's say a five. 
Yes? Then the action server is going to receive this call, it's going to trigger this function, and it's going to start publishing messages into the command bell topic. So it's going to start moving the robot forward in the x axis. It's going to start moving the robot forward during exactly the number of seconds that I have sent in the call. So if in the call I sent the number five, it's going to start moving the robot forward for five seconds. After five seconds, I'm going to stop the robot and I'm going to re return the result to the client. Yes, so this is the expected behavior, right? Makes sense? Yes, yes, no. So far, so good. Is there a safe button for this new Rust Developers Studio Super Environment? Is asking Engineering Nations. There, yes, there is. There is. Here in the name, where we have in the center, in the bottom section here in the center, you have the name. Then if you click here, you have here the button in order to save the project. Yes? So you can do it like this, Engineering Nations. And um, Felipe Rivas, it's an action message. Uh, is there a, yes, makes sense so far. Is there a cancel method as ROS1, Felipe Rivas? Yes, there is There is this method in order to preempt the goal. However, however, I have been investigating a little bit and I think that this is not 100% uh, working in ROS2 yet. So it's something that they are still developing, this uh, uh, goal preemption in action, in ROS2 actions. So that's why I have not included this into this live class. Yes. So for what I have been investigating, I think this is not yet uh, fully working, the preemption. Yes. However, it's going to be available, Felipe. Uh, so this is going to be available for sure uh, in the future. But as far as I know and as far as I have been investigating, I think that this is not yet working, 100% working in Rust2, this goal preemption. All right. So if everything is clear, let's keep going. Then. Let me compile one more time here my action server with the last changes I have been doing. Let's source here the worst base and let's run our action server. So let me come here, copy the command I have here and run my action server. There we go. And I'm going to now open another shell here. Let's place it here at the side. Let's source Rust to Eloquent. So now I have my here, as you can see here, I have my action server running. So now let's see some uh, commands that we can use in order to get some data from the action server. The first one is ROS2 action list. So you can get a list of the current available action servers with the following command. If we execute this command ROS2 action list here, I'm going to get a list of the current available actions. In this case, we only have one, which is my action, which is this one. Yes, the one I have created here, I have named my action. So currently we only have one action running. Yes, then we can, for instance, get some more info about this specific action with the following command ros to action info my action and the name of the action which is my action in this case ros to action info so it, this is going to give me some information yes um, the name of the action the name of action clients so currently we don't have any client which is connected to this action and action server we have one action server, which is this test action server node. Yes, this test action server node that we have defined it here, the name of the node, it's the server. Yes, so this node is the server and so far we don't have any client. Yes, so this is giving us some information about this action server. What else, what else? So for instance, if we do ROS2 action dash H, this is going to give me some options. So we have the info option that we have already seen, 
the list option that we have already seen, the send go option that we are going to see in a moment, not yet, but it's pretty obvious. So this option is to send a goal to this action. And we have this show option, output the action definition. So this show option, basically it's going to give us information about the message. And how does this command work? Like this, ROS2 show, sorry, ROS2 action show, and I put the name of the package, which is, that contains the message, which is test action. We have it, well, in fact, we have it here. Here we have a different command, but But let's let's execute it like this first. Let's do this ROS2 action show first. Yes? Let's do it like this. ROS2 action show, show and then I put the package that contains my message, which is test action, the folder that contains the message, which is action, and the name of the message, which is tests. Test. Yes? Then if I execute this command here, it's going to give me a message. Uh, first of all, test action. Here, as you can see, it's saying, hey, ROS2 action show is deprecated and will be removed in ROS Foxy. Instead, use ROS2 interface show. Okay, so this ROS2 action show message is actually deprecated. Even though here it's uh, saying this, we need to change it because in ROS Foxy, it's going to be updated to ROS2 interface show, as we can see here. Yes? So instead of ROS2 action show, we actually need to use ROS2 interface show. Yes. By the way, uh, let me tell you that uh, also uh, next week, probably we are going to have already available in the super app, the ROS2 Foxy uh, instances. Yes. So you are going to be able to run, to create your ROS objects, for instance, in ROS2 Foxy. Yes, so far, as you already know, we are working on Eloquent, but next week we are going to have available the uh, Foxy version as well, which is super interesting. Yes? Okay, then um, let me execute this command then. So here it's complaining about this test action. It's not finding this message. Okay, why is this happening? Can somebody tell me why is this happening? Why it's not finding this message here? It's saying unknown package test action. Why? Let me know in the comments. Can somebody tell me, guys? Come on, come on. I trust in you. You did not source the test action package. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, uh, Soraya, Soraya says you did not source the test action package. Well, that's uh, almost correct because in fact uh, we are not sourcing the test action package, but we are sourcing the workspace instead. Yes, but the idea it's that one. Yes, so we need to source our workspace. We need to source the workspace that contains this package. In this case, this workspace is ROS2 workspace. So. I need to source this workspace in order to be able to detect the packages that are inside it, right? So let me source this workspace and now let me execute again the command and now I can find the test action package without problems. And here, as you can see, it's showing me the structure of my message, the one we have seen previously here in the file message instead, uh, directly here. We can see it now here. So it's giving me the structure. Hey, this test action message has this goal, which is, oops, has this part of the message, which is the goal, has this part of the message, which is the result, and this part of the message, which is the feedback, right? Okay, then what else? Let's keep, let's keep going. Okay, so we have seen some uh, commands that we can use in order to get information about our action server. So the last command that we have remaining here is the send goal. So let's use it now. So how to send a goal to the action server? 
then in order to send a goal to the action server, we, you, we can use this command here, yes? Rush to action, send goal, then you put here the name of your action, which in our case, remember, in my case here, my action is named my action, yes? So here I put the name of my action. If you have named your action different, you need to change this value here, yes? In my case, the name of my action is my action. So rush to actions and goal my action. Then I specify the message that my action is going to be using, which is test action, action, test. And finally, I give a value here to the goal. Yes, so our goal is this sex variable, this seconds variable. So I give a value in this case of five to my sex goal. Yes, makes sense. So this is the structure of this command in order to send a goal to the action server. Then let me copy this command here and paste it here. So again, what should happen if I send this goal to my action server? I'm sending the number five as goal. So as we have said before, what should happen is that my robot starts moving forward for five seconds, right? And after that time, it stops, the robot stops, and my action server returns the result, right? So let's see, let's see if this actually happens. Let me put this to a side and run it. So I have sent the goal to the action server. My robot starts moving forward for five seconds and it stops. Yes? Amazing, right? So I have sent a goal. Here we can see the output, the expected output. You can see here in the notebook as well. So this is what I am expecting here to get. So let me come back here. So I have sent a goal with the value five in the goal variable, in the sex goal variable. Then the goal has been upsetted, as we can see here by the action server, and then it has done whatever it needed to do. In this case, it has moved the robot forward for five seconds, and when it has finished it, it's re returning to me, to the client, the result, which says, hey, finish it, action server, move it during five seconds. Go finish it with a status succeeded. Yes, so as you can see, the result here, it's nothing else than the result I am setting here. Finish it, action server, move it, move it during five seconds in this case. Yes, because the sex variable contains the five numbers, so I have moved it, the row during five seconds. Yep, so I send a goal with a value which triggers the action server and when it finishes, it returns a result to me, right? So far, so good. Okay, so now you might be asking yourself, okay, super, super, super nice, but hey, Alberto, uh, this is the same as a service, right? So you could tell me this. Hey, Alberto, uh, you, you, you told me that uh, actions are different than services, but actually this is the same as a service. I could do perfectly this with a service. I could uh, create this as a service, send a, a call the service with a request, and the service server would return this same string as response when it finishes. Yes? So, so wha what's the difference here? Okay, so then let's do one thing. Let's add feedback into the game. So what we are going to do now is to add feedback to the action server. Then how can we do this? Very easily. So we need to add some things to the code. Yes, so for instance, let's first add these two lines of code here. So basically here what I am doing is to create a variable named feedback message, which contains the feedback part of the test message. Yes, so remember here, for instance, we are creating a variable result which contains the result part of the test message, which is this one. Then here, what we are doing is to create a, a variable feedback message which contains the feedback part of the test message, which is this one, this last one. 
yes? Then I am create, I am accessing the feedback variable, yes? Why feedback? Well, because here it's named feedback, yes? So if here this is named Chuck Norris, here I would access this like this, yes? Make sense? Then let's go back to how we had it. So we are accessing the, the feedback variable and we are giving it this value. In this case, this is a string. So we are uh, assigning to the feedback the following string, robot moving forward. Yes, so this is a simple feedback. We could create a more complex feedback, but for now, let's just give this feedback. Yes, so while the robot is moving, we are going to set this feedback to this string, robot moving forward. Then where can I add this? Let's get these two first lines and let's add it to our code. Let's say, for instance, we can add it here before the action takes place. Yes. So here where we are defining all the messages, I'm going to define my feedback. Then when, where should I public publish my feedback? Can somebody tell me where should I publish my feedback? So here, as you can see here, what we are doing is to define here a, a, a logger, a, a, a log message, which is going to contain my feedback, and I am publishing the feedback here. Go handle publish feedback. Yes? Then where should I publish my feedback? Here in my code. Can somebody tell me where? In the loop? That's right, Engineering Nations. So what I want to have uh, feedback is while the action is taking place, right? While the, while the action is doing whatever it has to do, I would like to have feedback. Meanwhile, the action is doing its thing, right? Therefore, I should publish my feedback inside the loop because this is where I am actually performing the action, where I am actually moving the robot, yes? So let's put this here. Let's make sure that the indentation is right. So inside the loop, I am going to publish my feedback, okay? And that's it. Super, super easy. So I define my feedback and I publish it. Then let's save this and let's compile. We need to compile one more time. So let me let me stop the action server, which I have running here. Let me stop my action server. Let me recompile this. Call com build. And source install setup.bash. And since I have updated my workspace, I have updated my program, I should also source here in this other shell. Yes, because I have updated my program, so I need to have the latest version of my program, right? So I need to source here as well. Then let me run here again the command to start my action server. There we go. Let's make sure here that we have our action running. We have it, there we go. And now we can run again the command to call our action server, which is this one, but we need to do a modification to our command. So as you can see here, we are adding this feedback tag, yes? So after the send goal here, we are adding this feedback tag in order to say, hey, I want to get the feedback from the action server. So I want to activate the feedback. I want to, to get the feedback, yes? Then we activate here this feedback option in the command, yes? After the send goal, all right? Then let's now send the goal again. Let's see what happens. So here, let's see. Remember, the robot should start moving forward for five seconds. So let me send the goal. 
we see the robot here starts moving forward and we didn't get the feedback for some reason so um, to action send go okay so for some reason here we didn't get the let me let me uh, yeah, so this is properly sourced, I think. Let me have a look here. Oh, of course. So I have a mistake here. I have copied again these two lines, you see? So I have copied again these two lines. <laughs> this is a mistake. So no, I... These two lines are where I define the message and I fill in the feedback message, but I need to put inside the loop these two lines, which, which are the lines that actually publish the feedback. Yes? So let me fix this. Let me remove these two lines and copy actually the lines that are going to publish the feedback. Yes? Which are the second two. Yes? So these two lines let me put it here. These two lines. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, define and fill the feedback message. And these two lines here actually publish the feedback. Yes? Okay. So make sure that you have it like this. Then we publish the message inside the f the our loop as engineering nations has uh, told us so if this doesn't work remember if this doesn't work this is engineering nations fault yes he has told me to put the feedback inside the loop so if this doesn't work it's engineering nations fault so you can blame him for this okay then uh, okay so let's compile this again let's compile now that I have fixed my code. Let's compile this. Let's source. Let's source also here. Then let's run our action server. Here, let's make sure one more time that we have it running so that we can call it. There we go, we have it running. And now one more time, let's call it, remember, with the feedback activated. Yes, so let's call it. The robot starts moving I'm get, and I'm getting the feedback here, robot moving forward, right? Okay, so it has worked. It, ha it has worked. We don't need to blame it on engineering nations. Okay, uh, great, guys. So that's all for today's live class. So we have been able to complete uh, the live class without any issues. Um, everything worked nice. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this live class a lot. I hope you have love it our new ROS development studio i really love it so i hope you have uh, like it uh, also working on our new ROS development studio uh, but uh, most of all i hope you have learned something you have learned a little bit more about action servers how actions work in ROS 2 i think it was a very interesting uh, life class so Yes, Felipe, yes, I copied the same line twice. Yes, yes, exactly, I copied the same line twice. Yes, okay, guys, so, so yes, uh, as I have just said, um, let's leave it here. We are already past the time, so thank you very much, guys. I hope you, you have uh, enjoyed this live, uh, this live class. I hope you have enjoyed Rose Develop, our new Rose Development Studio, and I have... I hope you have uh, learned something new from this hour. That's uh, my main purpose for live classes. So thank you very much, guys, uh, for being here with me, for supporting us. And uh, let me, by the way, 
show you my face. I was still showing you here the screen. So thank you very much. Uh, I will see you in next live class where let me tell you that we are going to do something super, super. Uh, well, I think it's not next week. If I'm not wrong, I think it's not next week, but the next one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, in any case, in the next live class, we are going to be working with the real robot lab. Yeah, so this function that we have that we can connect to the to a real robot here in our facilities, we are going to be testing this. Yes, so we are going to create a program in the ROS Development Studio. We are going to create a script. We are going to test it first in simulation, and then we are going to connect to the real robot, and we are going to test it in the real robot. Yes, so super, super interesting. This is going to happen in the next live class. So meanwhile, until then, as always, uh, take care and keep pushing your ROS learning. So bye bye. What are you doing, Alberto? I'm training this intern with ROS. Oof. Did you have this same experience? Spending too much time equipping your team with ROS skills? Check out our ROS Online training solution for enterprises. A fast and easy way to empower your team with ROS. From ROS basics to manipulation, perception, AI, ROS2, everything your team needs to learn is here. Practice with real and simulated robots. Train your team by doing from day one. Also, our ROS experts will provide you one hour of consulting services to boost your robotics projects. Want to become a happy Alberto? Request a demo today.